Hey there, this is Kinkas, and I'm a synth DIY guy, and I'm making this series of videos showing you guys uh, different little useful tricks. And uh, today I'd like to talk about making a MIDI cable to interface between Arturia and uh, Make Noise or Arturia and um, Korg products because they both use. Uh, stereo mini plugs for their uh, MIDI connections to uh, so they can use smaller jacks instead of that big clunky MIDI DIN and actually MIDI only takes three wires anyways so that's why you can do this but they are inverted the Arturia spec is inverted compared to the make noise or Korg spec so that means tip and ring are are swapped, uh, which means you can't use just a simple stereo cable to interface between, say, a Beatstep Pro and uh, a No Coast, for example. So, my No Coast came with this uh, stereo mini plug, the stereo plug uh, cable that I don't really use. I mean, who's got stereo TRS audio input anyway? It's usually dual mono or um, or balanced for this kind of cable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cannibalize this cable. Uh, I'm going to cut off the big jack. It's a bit of a waste. If you have uh, if you have this kind of just uh, stereo balanced wire, you can get two of these stereo jacks and do it you know from scratch. But today I'm just going to keep one end as it is. Nice molded plastic by Hosa here. And I'm going to cut off this guy. It's a good length too. I think it's short enough that uh, it won't be bulky. And um, maybe I'll leave a little bit of the wire here in case I want to use this this jack for an adapter or something. You know, put some other kind of um, thing over there so it's not completely wasted. So now we're going to just expose the the cores here pretty soft cable so I don't need a lot of trimming and uh, here we have the, uh, the shielding. The shielding is actually not even really necessary but it's useful because it might keep the MIDI noise from bleeding into your other cables so if you're patching and um, I haven't really experienced too much of that problem but you know that's why we use stereo cables that are of mono so that uh, the ground is shielded but the ground doesn't even go into the MIDI signal path it's the two the two signal wires that actually are taking the information so this is really tiny so instead of using the tweezers and risk um, risk cutting the, the copper I'm going to use fire I'm just going to burn off the tip of these two There we go, and that exposes the wire. I use my fingernails to pull off the, uh, the burned part. And there we go. So now we can, we can tin these tips. Bring this a little closer. And tin these tips with a hot iron, a little bit of solder. So it's easier to solder it later onto the uh, Now this is important and everybody's forgotten once and soldered up the, the jack and then realized that they have the uh, the casing uh, outside and need to unsolder so we're going to put the casing through first. This is a nice little Amphenol jack that already has pretty tight little plastic sleeve here so I don't feel the need to use any thermal fit or anything like that which you could if you feel like you need to. So now we just got to solder, well before we solder this up we need to know what goes where, right? So let's use the multimeter and continuity, cont continuity setting to see which wire is the tip and that we're going to solder to the sleeve because the point here is to invert the tip and sleeve signals. So let's see, looks like uh, white is probably the tip, yep. So white's the tip. That means white's going to be wired to the sleeve on our 
uh, new jack, right? So let's see which of these is which of these connectors or uh, tabs here is actually connected to the tip to the sleeve. Sorry, to the ring. Ring. I've been saying sleeve. I actually mean ring. The sleeve is where ground is going to go. Okay, so now we use the uh, the same continuity setting diode tester. Ah, here we go. So that's where we want to, right here is where we want to solder the white because that's tip on one end is going to be ring on the other. I'm not even going to put it through the hole or anything with the solder that's on there from tinning it already that seems to be okay sturdy enough now we can put the other the red one through the other the other little hole there okay solder that up let's use the helping hands to hold that Cut off the excess, you don't want it touching ground. It's even a little bit of a short here, which I'll cut off with the tweezers. And now there's ground. Ground, like I said, is not really necessary for the MIDI signal. So even if you have like a mono cable, you can get away with using it. Uh, but the, it's there in the protocol for a reason, which is to will protect the signal from interference when you're using extremely long cables but also to keep the MIDI signal noise from bleeding into potential audio cables that might be close by so we're just going to solder the ground onto the body of the jack of the plug I mean right there that's good enough now I'm going to take a quick look and see if I haven't created any shorts and it looks like I have I'm doing a little bit of a shabby job here I'm not used to talking while I work um, but it should be good enough okay that looks good so now before I tighten everything up let's uh, make sure I didn't make a mistake and measure the continuity again with the meter and see if tip is connected to, to ring and it looks like it is all right and now we can check for shorts if it's if it rings i mean if it beeps in any other place then we have a short and it doesn't look like we do so that's it tip to ring you can just go ahead and tighten the uh, these holders here, whatever you call them. There we go. And close up the jack, and we have a MIDI cable now just make sure you know that, that that's what this is because if you use it as a normal stereo cable you're gonna get inverted left to right okay enjoy <laughs>